Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at 5 tips that will make our renders more realistic. Make sure to stay around until the end of the video to get the best results. I don't know about you, but I personally have never been a fan of the default Enscape grass. But thanks to an Enscape thread in the community forum, of which I will leave a link in the description, I have been able to improve the quality of the grass in my renders. Uh, the first step to improve your grass is to get this image from the link in the description, which we're going to use as a replacement for the default grass distribution. To replace the default grass, go to disk C in your computer, go to users and select the one that you are using. After you have done that, click on the app data folder, open the local file and then double click on programs. In this file, you should be able to find the file named Enscape, which you should be opening. After that, open the renderer file, system data, textures, open Enscape, and finally click on common. All right, so don't worry, even though there's a lot of folders they have to open, this is nothing complicated. In fact, I will leave the path to this folder in the description down below. And after you're here, you just take the original grass texture of this folder, maybe save it somewhere you won't forget in case you want to put it back in Enscape and then replace it with a new grass texture that you have downloaded. So now that you have replaced the file, we can check the results on our Enscape scene and as you can see, I believe that this new grass texture looks much better and much more realistic. If you want to further improve your grass, I really like this texture which I also found in the Enscape article and it puts different shades of green in the grass, which is actually how grass is like in real life. Having a good material configuration throughout the scene is crucial to achieve realistic results. And if the new Enscape material library doesn't fulfill all your material needs, you would want to be using PBR materials. So PBR materials stands for physically based rendering and it just means that PBR materials are based in the real world and they're very realistic. There's a few free sources online that you can get PBR materials from like sharedtextures.com, texturesbog.com, ambientcg.com which are all great places to get PBR materials for free and I'll leave a link in the description for each one of them so you can check them out and download some files for yourself. So once you choose a material that you like you will see a few maps that will pop up for you to download and each one of them has their own purpose. Most of the time for Enscape you won't really need to use all of them and I usually download the diffuse map, the roughness map, displacement map and the bump map and once you download them you can easily apply these two renders in Enscape. To do so we will create a new material in the material section in your native modeling software and then load up the diffuse map first. After that we apply the flat diffuse texture onto our surface and then we would want to go to the Enscape materials editor tab and then import each of the maps in their sections. So as you can see, the material looks much more realistic than just placing the flat diffuse texture and it saves time from configuring all the materials yourself in the Enscape Material Editor. While the default Enscape light distribution is great, using IES profiles can give a boost for your realism. If you haven't heard of an IES until now, it's basically a file that provides more photorealistic lighting distribution in rendered images than the default light distribution in most rendering engines. You can download plenty of IES profiles for free at ieslibrary.com and you can upload them pretty easily in Enscape. All of the IES profiles that you can see in this website are based in real world light distributions and some of them are created based on manufacturers of certain light bulbs or other lighting objects. You can also sort them by the light type that you want to place it on and you can just click the tags and you will see a wide variety of light options like ceilings, wall or pendant lighting. Now that you have downloaded the file, you can open the objects tab and in this instance I will click on an existing light and I will check the load IS profile section. 
Right after I load up the IS profile, you can see that the default lighting distribution that Enscape offers is replaced with an IS profile that I believe truly brings better results onto our scene. So before we move on to our next tip, if you've enjoyed so far, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel since we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. In most of your scenes, you have probably put some light sources in your rendering. And what some beginners in Enscape or even rendering in general don't know is that putting a light source close to a light object doesn't actually lit up the light object itself. And there is one simple fix to this issue. For example, if you want to light up the exterior light right here, you can select the material with the eyedropper tool and change the material option into self-illuminated in the Enscape material editor. You can use this in other instances as well, like an example right here, where I put a spotlight under the ceiling lights, but the light doesn't actually show as lit up. So I can select the light surface through the eyedropper tool again and switch it to a self-illuminated material and that way it actually looks like it has some light coming from inside the object itself. We can also use this option for neon lights. And basically, if the modeling already exists, we can just select the material and turn it to self-emissive like the house numbers in this instance. And we can also change the color that it emits as well. Another way in which you make your rangers more realistic is through HDRI images. HDRIs help us in two different ways when we are rendering. The first one is to give us a background for our horizon and the second one is to give us a realistic light source from real life scenarios. I've said this plenty of times in my previous videos as well, but I feel like it is such an important element that it has to be emphasized multiple times. If you're wondering where you can get HDRIs, I will leave a link in the description where you can get many of them for free and all the HDRIs from the website that I'm leaving the link are taken from real life scenarios so that will 100% make your renders a lot more realistic. So after you've downloaded your HDRI to add it onto our scene, we just go to the Enscape visual settings, click on the sky tab, change the option to skybox and then we load it up from the location we downloaded the HDRI on. As you can see the sky and the lighting look very different from the default Enscape sky and in my opinion, it looks much more realistic. You can play around with plenty of HDRI images and see the difference between them, after which you can choose the one you like the most. A lot of people overlook this since they use HDRIs just as a filler image for the background, but in fact the materials reflect a lot of what the HDRI image contains and it just makes up for a different and more realistic lighting throughout the whole render. Alright, so this was it for the video. If you've enjoyed, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check out my Patreon and I will see you in the next one. Imagine if you will, sitting down to your morning coffee, turning on your home computer to read the day's newspaper. Well, it's not as far-fetched as it may seem.